Hello, Hi Video Order Stuff, welcome back. Does it annoy you when you shoot an interior scene and any shot that has a window in it ends up being completely overexposed? I've had many requests from you guys for tips of how to shoot that kind of scene without having the view outside of the window overexposed. In essence, to mimic the way that the eye sees and really to sell that kind of cinematic, immersive look. My goal is to get my shots looking like this to this. Watch on to find out how. I've really given this a lot of thought and I've put together my best tips to help. So whether you're a beginner or if you're more experienced, I'm hoping you'll take something away from this video. Now, there are quite a few ways that you can get this look and here they are. If you're lucky enough to be shooting on a camera that has a low contrast log mode, or if you're even luckier to be shooting on a camera that has a high bit rate or even raw format, and no, the Canon 5D Mark IV's MJPEG mode doesn't count then you'll be in a really good position for keeping that exterior from being overexposed. Just as a point of reference, I've recorded this in a linear format, and as you can see, it's a really sunny day, and I've exposed for my skin. And then when we drop our exposure to expose for the window, you can see a huge, huge difference, many, many stops lower. Taking a look at the same scene and shot in S-Log2, we can see masses more dynamic range, and I've exposed somewhere in the middle between the bright window and my face. And when we add a curve you can see things are looking pretty good but this is still nowhere near where I would like it to be. Now with SOG3 and of course we're getting more dynamic range still, albeit with the usual noisy shadows that we've come to expect from this profile. But let's add some contrast and saturation and see if this gets us anywhere near where we want to be. Hmm, I would say definitely nowhere near where we want to be just at the moment, but I'm sure S-Log will help us out to get there. And just in case you're wondering, the reason why there's a reddish pinky hue to my face, I haven't been running or anything like that, is because there's a garishly painted wall at the other side of the camera. Masking certain areas in your scene to either lower or raise the exposure is very common practice in cinematography. However, it can be quite time consuming because if you've got any camera movement in your shot, then you'll need to use motion tracking. A great example of this can be found on Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows part two, one of the final scenes. Keep your eyes peeled on Narcissa Malfoy. You can clearly see that as she moves, there's an oval of light that travels with her. Sure, we can use this technique to mask around the window and lower the exposure, or we can use an underexposed shot and raise the exposure of everything else. To me, this technique isn't ideal however you go about it, because assuming you're using a standard linear, i.e. not log mode, you'll either be trying to recover highlights from the window area, or you'll be bringing up shadow noise from everywhere else. On occasion, you could even consider making some sort of composite shot where you take the correctly exposed areas in multiple shots and combine them into one cheesy looking HDR style shot. One of my first choices for correcting an overexposed window would be to light my interior in an effort to balance the light in my scene. Let's start with our underexposed shot and then bring in a two light setup. And unbelievably, this is actually straight out of camera with zero correction. Now let's take a look at our overexposed shot and compare it again to our lit shot. Now I'd say we're getting somewhere. The difficulty in doing this, of course, is to make your lighting blend in with your practical lights, and it's really not easy, and it may take quite a lot of trial and error, but get it right and you should have a nice natural looking scene and you'll be able to lower the exposure of that overexposed window. Just because I know you're interested, in this scene I used a non-diffused light on camera right to mimic the light coming through the window, and I used a light with diffusion on camera left to mimic the ambient light in the room. You could also look at flipping things on its head and reducing the amount of light that's coming through your window. I did this with neutral density sheets, which you can get from most stage lighting shops. Taking another look at the shot where we've exposed for the outside, you can see that when we add the ND sheets and adjust our exposure accordingly, it brings up some of the ambient light in the room. We can play with the exposure settings a little bit to make it look a bit more acceptable, but the point of these ND sheets really becomes clear when we combine it with some lighting. The ones that I bought are made by a company called Lee, and I think they're meant to be quite well known, but they're great quality, they're very lightweight, they don't have any kind of colour cast, and most importantly, they're friendly to the wallet. I will link them below, so definitely check that out. The ones that I got are the two-stop ND sheets, however, they do a, a big range of other strengths. I know what you're thinking. Harve, 
What if we combine all the techniques that we've mentioned so far? Shooting in log, lighting the scene, and cutting down on the, the light coming through the window. Well, that's exactly what I did, so let's check that out now. Just as a reference, here's our original overexposed window shot, and then we add in the shot where I've added lighting and ND sheets in front of the window, this is what we get. This example was shot with just a linear picture profile, so now let's compare this to S-Log2. And then let's grade it a little. And then let's compare it to S-Log3 with its extended dynamic range. And if we add a similar grade to S-Log2. So I'm actually quite happy with this. And to go from this to this, without any motion tracking or masking is a pretty cool thing. So that's it for now and I really hope you found that helpful. If you know any other techniques that I've missed, definitely pop them down below um, because I learn so much from these videos and I hope that you do too. Anyway, I'll catch you next time and uh, let's help each other out and shoot better videos.